when you get to harmonizing the minor scale. In two triads, the E becomes an E minor. F sharp becomes F sharp diminished. The G is major. A is minor. B is minor. C is major. And D is major. Any combination of these chords will be your hint that the scale used is E minor or E minor pentatonic. The fingering I'm using for E minor is open on strings 1, 2, and 3, middle finger on the 4th string 2nd fret, index on the 5th string 2nd, and the 6th string is open. The F sharp diminished is an index barring the 2nd fret from strings 3 through 6, 5th string 3rd fret with the middle, and the 4th string 4th fret with the ring. For G, you could play the open G chord, but here I'm using the G major bar chord. So bar your index, cross the 3rd fret of all 6 strings, add your middle finger to the 3rd string 4th fret, pinky to the 4th string 5th fret, and ring to the 5th string. A minor, is first string open, second string first fret with the index, third string second fret with the ring, and the fourth string second fret with the middle. The uh, fifth string is open. To play the B minor, bar your index across the second fret, and strings one through five, and add the second string third fret with the middle, third string fourth fret with the pinky, fourth string, fourth fret, with the ring. For C, you can play an open C chord, but I'm using a standard fifth string bar chord. Index on the fifth string, third fret, and bar the fifth fret on strings four, three, and two. You can move this up two frets for the D chord, or you can play an open D, which I choose to play first string, second with the index, 2nd string 3rd fret with the ring, and 3rd string 2nd fret with the middle, 4th string is open. Altogether you have the E minor, F sharp diminished, G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, and you can resolve on E minor. So let's say we have an E minor to an A minor chord progression. We know both are derived from the key of E minor. Plus, there is a very good rule to learn. Usually, the first chord in a chord progression will tell you what key it is in. So in this case, we play the E minor to A minor progression and test our E minor scale. see that it fits perfectly with both chords. Now 
Now let's look at a progression that doesn't start on the root of a key. For example, what if we have a B minor to A minor to E minor chord progression? Something like this. All three chords are derived from the E minor scale, but if you start on the E note, it might not sound exactly like you want it to over the B minor chord. So in cases like this, if we use the E minor scale but start on the B note and move with the progression, that the key is an E minor and that the scale will work, but you have to pay attention to what the notes uh, you're playing over each scale might be. A rule of thumb, sometimes it, a scale will work perfectly if you know that all the chords are derived from that scale. Um, and sometimes you do have to kind of move with the direction of the, of the chords. So you might start out with the B, and when you get to the A minor, Play, uh, any of these start off with any of the A minor chord tones. So we've got an A, that's a possible tone we could start on. The E note would definitely fit better uh, than it would over B because E is part of the A minor chord. A minor is made up of A, C, and E. So you can start with uh, just about any note that you want there, either the A note, the C note, or even the E note. And naturally when you get to the E minor, the entire scale should fit over the uh, E minor chord. Let's look at a four chord progression. Here we have an E minor, to C, to D, and to G. There's only one minor chord versus three major chords. Uh, will the E minor scale fit? Well, all four chords come from the E minor scale, so if we try to play the scale over it, you see that it fits perfectly.